The big uh, hindrance for building net zero uh, is the assumption that it's significantly more expensive and what we're finding is not that much more expensive. I mean, historically it's been 5 to 7 percent more, if not a little bit more. Uh, we're, gonna, we're finding it's going to be about 1 to 2 percent more expensive. Uh, we will be building this house for about $200 a square foot. Uh, higher end houses are being built for $350 to $400 a square foot. Uh, my name is Perry Brooks. I'm one of the uh, owners of Net Zero Development. Welcome. Or <laughs> Development. Uh, we're a small startup company that uh, builds Net Zero uh, single family and multifamily homes in Bend, Oregon. I ended up working on this project um, kind of seeing the need and the void in the market for developing high performance houses. Of course, there are other Net Zero houses and high performing houses in the area. But a company, there hasn't, there's not a company that uh, whose sole purpose is to develop these these type of houses. And we saw a niche in the market with the upcoming energy code changes to nationally and through the state of Oregon. We saw a hole in the market to kind of get this off the ground. Some of the things that we used to get to net zero uh, were the windows and doors. The windows are triple pane with a U of 1.9, which is pretty significant, and the doors are uh, 1, 1.9 as well. We utilize an ERV or, um, uh, an, or an HRV, which is heat recovery ventilation, basically is uh, pushing the good air into the house through HEPA filters, which creates uh, an air filtration system that uh, eliminates 99.9% .9 of uh, anything, from, anything bad from the outside into the house itself. And we also utilize the, uh, the mini splits for our heating and cooling, which is a ductless heating, heating and cooling system. In lieu of taping and uh, sealing all the seams, uh, we use the air bearer, which uh, guides down to an air, um, air, air change per hour of a 0.6, which um, potentially qualifies us for uh, a passive house. Um, and we got the house was down to a 0.6, and we got the ADU down to a 0.3. With this project, we built a uh, main uh, residence with an ADU atop of a garage. In this particular zone, on this size of a lot, we were allowed to build a 600 square foot ADU on top of a 600 square foot garage slash storage space. Um, ADUs are really important to uh, get the density that the city needs um, in their urban planning uh, scheme. Uh, in order to grow the urban growth boundary, they have to show that they uh, have provided enough density to meet those requirements. Uh, this particular ADU is, uh, has a great room and one bedroom and a bath and a fairly small kitchen. The house will have a 14 kilowatt uh, solar system which will uh, power the house. We have no gas, uh, so everything is electric. And we anticipate uh, sending back power to the grid on a yearly basis. Um, we don't really know that number yet, but typically a, a house of this size, the system that we're putting in will probably sell back about $100 annual or monthly back to the grid. The rate of return on the solar system, you know, which is typically the most expensive mechanism uh, as you uh, build an Ezra house, is about seven years. SIPs are, uh, it's an acronym for structurally insulated panels. Uh, they are panels that are um, about six to eight inches of rigid foam and they're sheathed on either side with OSB. They create a really high performing interior space with a uh, little air leakage and to get to a net zero house uh, that's really the crux of what you need to do is to uh, have a really high uh, performing interior space that with little air leakage in and out. And SIPs uh, was the most economical and uh, fastest way in which we can achieve that. The product itself is a little less expensive and the process of putting them up is very economical in that you can have the house up in a fraction of the time that you could stick frame, insulate, sheath, and go through the whole process of getting the shell completed. 
we believe that if we would have had a full framing crew and flatten the learning curve in putting the SIP house together, we probably could have had the house uh, up and with a roof on probably in two weeks. Using SIP for the first time definitely had its challenges and we had a learning curve to overcome, which we knew from the onset. Um, but once we flattened that learning curve out, uh, we went really quickly in, in putting the house up. Um, it's really about uh, straps and come-alongs and sledgehammers uh, to put, put it together because it's so tight and engineered and designed so uh, precisely that it's really, and because it really needs to be a tight house, it really is just pushing it together and getting it, you know, getting the walls in place. Um, definitely was a, the learning curve probably was literally a day of kind of trying to figure out what we were doing. And once that was uh, gone, the house went up very quickly. Um, so typically, another factor in which we decided to go with SIPs is the, the waste that's produced as, as part of the construction. Typically, it's about 79% less waste than you would have doing stick framing, uh, in that we've had our first dump load, our first load to the dump was in my little uh, three cubic yard trailer from home, and that was taking basically the remnants of the insulation that were underneath the slab. Um, and since then we've had one dump run uh, to the dump uh, and typically you would have 10 to 12 for a project of this size. So we've did drastically reduced the amount of waste uh, going off-site. I'm Patrick Chagru with Premier Building Systems. I've been working with structural insulated panels for about 25 years. I came across them years ago when I helped hand frame a timber frame here in the Bend area and it was covered with SIPs. And I realized early on that they offered three of the elements that we need for a high performance envelope. More insulation than code, minimal thermal bridging, and relatively airtight. And SIPs do all three very well. We get down to one air change per hour uh, on buildings without a whole lot of rigmarole. We, uh, we take out about 60, 70 percent of the lumber, so that really helps with the thermal bridging. And uh, then with our six inch wall now with our graphite foam, we can do an R26 with our eight inch wall, but we, with that we can do an R32. One of the nice things with uh, EPS is that as the temperature drops, the R value goes up. And we are, uh, I'm trying to remember the numbers, about 50% better energy efficiency than a stick wall of the same R value. And we're six times more tight. That's one of my big things uh, that in construction, it takes so long, so much planning, so much money, so much labor. We've got to make these buildings as durable as we can.